Uh, oh wait, that's the wrong theme. Uh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I know, <laughs> I know, nerd to wrinkle the hell. I'm joking, I'm joking. Uh, good, uh, good. Uh, what are we at? Morning. Morning. Yeah. Oh yeah, Scott. It's still morning for you. Good morning, everybody. This is mm. Hunter here. I'm here with Scott and Colin, and let's just get to it. We were talking about the Force motherfucking awakens. That's not the official title. Uh, should, <laughs> should be, but but Star they Wars. <laughs> That makes me think it was Sam Jackson should have been in this. <laughs> Dude, right? Okay, so, you know, I, I actually, there's a point I thought Sam Jackson was going to pop up. But anyways, um, let's just get in this. So, this was one, this was easily my top five uh, for my most anticipated films for the year. Uh, Colin, if memory serves correctly, this was your number one uh, most anticipated film of the year. And uh, Scott, mm-hmm. Scott, I feel like you had it pretty high up, too, when we were just talking off mic about it. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, for me at least, one of my most anticipated because it's been. Uh, let's see, when is the one? How long has it been since the last Good one star- came uh, out? Uh, now, are you saying like the last? Star the Wars most, movie? just the most recent. Uh, okay, we're not talking like Good not star not chronological. Re- not... Revenge of the Sith. Yeah. Uh, that came out. I am gonna look. It's been at it. like seven. It's not like seven. Two thousand five. Wow. Oh, wow, so 10, ten years. years. So ten years, yeah, since that dumb movie that we got. But um, so I kind of have to defer to you guys uh, because I'm a I'm a casual Star Wars fan, not a huge one, but I did like watch the movies quite a few times when I was a kid and have always really liked Star Wars quite a bit. Um, now, with that said, Star Wars has been put through the ringer uh, with you know shitty movies mediocre games uh uh animated series that was pretty good till they fucked that up too um the so star wars is like i hate to interrupt here God. they have a few a couple good games wouldn't you agree i no. feel like they along the way they've had a couple good ones oh no they've definitely had some good games but as far as like the films and just like right maintaining oh yeah it as a whole they've like bastardized it like it's pretty sad honestly but um but with that said when we heard that disney bought Lucasfilm, which I thought was just fucking hilarious, um, we were all like, oh my god, we're getting new Star Wars, so they bring in J.J. Abrams, who of course rebooted Star Trek, and no matter how you feel about that second film, has done a good job, you know, in his, uh, realm of sci-fi and action, so bringing him on seemed like a good call, but this is a daunting task to, like, launch, relaunch Star Wars into a new trilogy, but, um, Overall, and I will defer again to you, Colin, because you're the biggest Star Wars nerd out of all of us. I thought he did a really phenomenal job with this. I was quite impressed. Yeah, that was the smartest thing they could have ever done was get J.J. Abrams on this, especially after everybody was so pleased with what he did with Star Trek. Um, it was a pretty obvious choice. I think I think the, a lot of the fan base was kind of you know rooting for him to get this job and be able to make this movie. And, uh, yeah, he didn't, he didn't disappoint at all. Yeah, I mean, so, th- this is the thing about this review. We're going to have to talk about the plot to an extent, but we are going to stay so far away from spoilers because, like, there are so many, like, things here you could potentially spoil, so we are going to dance around shit the best we can, but, uh, but, yeah, if you hear something about the plot, you're like, what the hell? We have to talk about the plot, sorry, but we will keep spoilers to an ex- absolute minimum. So, just to kind of jump in here, I mean, the plot, it's pretty simple, honestly. It's just kind of like, well, uh, we get introduced to this new character named Ray, and she's kind of, I don't even want to say a loser, but she's just kind of like, she doesn't know where the hell, what she's doing, or where she really belongs. Uh, we have a... Uh, John Boyega, uh, like the sweatiest black man ever. Um, <laughs> Everybody's and, really sweaty in this movie. It's a very sweaty movie. It is yeah, a but, very sweaty movie. It, it is, but jump like the first couple times you see Finn, you're like, oh my god, that brother's sweating that Jerry curl. Well, I mean, there. it's like, funny because like I mean, it, it's not a shocker to tell people he's a he's a storm, ex stormtrooper. It's like whenever you see people with those suits on, and it's like, man. But you just want to take that helmet off, and it's like it's kind of cool that they uh, kind of personified that through some 
some ex stormtroopers like, "Oh man, I'm so sweaty under here. It's ridiculous." <laughs> that, that is yeah, true. I, I liked the way they went with the story. That uh, I feel like, like if you go back to like the old like clerks debate during that movie where they're talking about you know all the people that are stormtroopers working on the Death Star when they blow it up, they're just like they're just a bunch of random like people. You know, they don't necessarily like. It's probably people doing construction on the second Death Star, <laughs> you know. Yeah, totally. Like blue collar workers trying to make a living as a stormtrooper, and, and then you know the rebels come in and blow everything up. <laughs> yeah, but, it's uh, kind of the first explanation of like what what they are and why they're there, kind of a thing. They're kind of putting a face to them. I like that. Right. Too. Yeah, and it, and it was later, you know, revealed that you know they're all clones and everything. But he. Uh, I like that they they humanized the, the whole stormtrooper, made him like, you know, a real people that like someone could like rebel and decide they don't want to, you know, help kill all these random people. Yeah, which which admittedly I did appreciate. But what's funny, just to give you just how D- Disney is just keeping their lips shut on this. This is literally the the synopsis on Rotten Tomatoes. The Star Wars saga continues with the seventh entry, the first under the Walt Disney Company umbrella. The film will act as the start of a new tri- trilogy set after the events of Return of the Jedi. J.J. Abrams directs from a script by Michael Ar- Ardent. That's, that's that's literally good. all it says. It's mm-hmm. kind of ridiculous. But, um, but through circumstances, uh, Finn, Finn meets Ren, they go on their adventure together. Uh, and BB-8. <laughs> and B- you're right. And BB-8. Yeah. Um, as they... I, love that, I love that it's like the droid is like the most important part, just kind of like in the first Star Wars where, you know, Luke finds R2-D2. And, and you just pretty much touched on like my, I mean, I don't have too many gripes, but that is one, is that this is pretty much a New Hope remade. Kind of like Star Trek in the Darkness is like Rathacom, like kind of rebooted with some tweaks. And I've heard a lot of people going like, well, it's just New Hope. I'm like, well, okay, if you want to throw that, you know, that critique out, it's it's valid to an extent. But to be honest, I was sitting there the whole time. I was like, oh my god, it's Han Solo. Oh my god, it's Chewie. Oh my god. Like, I, I, I just didn't have, like, those complaints didn't register with me enough to, like, ruin my experience if that makes sense yeah i think i think that's what they were trying to do like it's a remake without calling it a remake like that's you know they they don't have you know it's not having a new character play luke and go through everything over again you know they kind of like they switch it up with you know the the main characters you know the the uh i'm, not, I'm trying to like tiptoe around these different things without spoiling <laughs> i i know it's hard right <laughs> i want to say things about uh you know uh ray and and finn, uh finn. and finn yeah but uh yeah basically they i i felt like it was like watching it and i was like oh this is a remake of a new hope but that's fine with me because that's kind of what i would want to see you know with all the um the new age technology that they have to make film uh, so, i thought it was cool all right scott what did you what did you think man hop jump on in. yeah it's um, I agree with a lot of what you guys are saying. Um, it's so man. This this, this has got to be probably one of the hardest movies to just remake. Period. Just based on expectation and uh, the fan base of the original one. Um, <clears throat> I think they had a slight advantage um, in this one because you're able to draw from those. Um, from episode three, four, and five that were, or, I'm sorry, four, five, and six that were so popular um, with a older generation now, but they're kind of looked looked at as kind of the best, kind of the only real Star Wars um, trilogy so far in the saga, and you're able to build on that with this one, and you're able to bring back old characters and have similarities um, between the two. And I actually agree with you, Hummer. I, it, it did feel very similar to a new, <clears throat> to a new hope. And, um, but I kind of liked it and I, I, I kind of did take, take, take away a little bit from uh, the newness of it, but 
it's kind of what I feel like fans wanted to see. They kind of wanted to see the old players and um, obviously some new ones, but like the music was phenomenal yes, and the way that they incorporated like the old um, uh, old soundtrack and just like some new stuff, um, I think that played really, really well. Um, but for them to be able for JJ Abrams to be able to like bring this back so that even Star Wars fans can say that was awesome was a huge accomplishment. Um well, so Well just to touch on the music real quick. Sorry to interrupt you, man, but John Williams who, who did the original trilogy, he did the scores, he came back to do the score for this and it really showed cuz it felt like an updated, you know, score but still had those classic you know the Star Wars sound to it. Um, so I have one major complaint uh, as someone's as someone's door opens. Um, I have one major one major complaint about this movie. Uh, Kylo Ren, who's played by uh, Adam Driver, um, God, could he be any more of a bitch? Like I was sitting there watching the movie, and there was no point he really felt threatening until the last twenty minutes where something occurs that I will not spoil that leads to a lightsaber fight. But I just, I was sitting in the whole movie. I'm like, I want you to be threatening, like be threatening, be evil. And I just never, I, I never felt that from him. I felt that more from, uh, uh, Supreme leader Snoke. Who's, uh, uh, played by Andy circus, uh, who we all love, but I just never felt like Kylo Ren was as threatening as he needed to be. Yeah, I. That's probably the only critique that I would have is he's not really quite as many. I almost wish that he didn't take his helmet off. Thank you so um, much for bringing that up. That was the other thing. And because you are uh, you are able to see his face in this, and he was. It's way more scary and intimidating with it on, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I know I know that's kind of the whole point. But you know, I would have almost rather he left it on, and um, just uh, also um, Dom. Uh, what is his, I'm, I'm gonna butcher it. Domnall Gleason is that his name? Domnall. Yes. Um, right. As General Hux, I I love him in everything he does, and he's really good in this as a Sith leader who's kind of like the uh, one of the general main generals. Oh, whoa, whoa, new, um, new, you mean the new order, or not, not, not Sith, you silly. The, the new order, I didn't say Sith. You said Sith. I heard you say no. Sith. I, no, I didn't. I will play it back to you. Anyways, continue. <laughs> okay. No, it's just, and I, I, I liked his role in this. Uh, I know you are saying you liked Andy Serkis and, uh, just so many good players in this, but yeah, I, going back to um, Adam Driver, it's like I said, just I probably would have preferred the helmet on. And yeah, I I, I agree with that too. Yeah, it, it, I thought I thought is uh, I thought they did a great job with his voice though. I thought it was like different than Darth Vader, but it yeah. was like still like it, like it was his own, but it was also like an homage to Darth Vader, which I liked. That that's a really good way to put it too. It felt very much like an homage, and this was the motherfucker from, motherfucker from Ex Machina. That's why he looked so familiar. That was bugging the hell out of me, um, and he was great in that too. But. I mean, there's a lot of blending in this movie between, you know, the old characters and the new characters. And it never feels like it's something they had to do. It all feels beautifully organic. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, when Han Solo and Chewie came on screen for the first time, I gave him a standing ovation. I was like, fuck yeah, because I didn't see... <laughs> because, you know, it made me sad, because Harrison Ford has been in some shit the last couple of years. Like, he just seems like the grumpy old man on the porch who's like... You know, like stoop kid from Hey Arnold, like don't touch yeah. my stoop. Like he, he just seems so overacting. But I didn't like. S- I didn't like him in uh, Forty Two. Did you I, not? Oh, not a I, fan. I didn't. Well, uh, Harrison Ford. Yeah, didn't like. Yeah, him. I, that one. That one. I thought he was like overacting a bunch. I didn't <laughs> like it. But I did like him in this, for the record. Um, well, like to kind of bring it back a little bit. Like 
when I saw Indiana Jones, that last abomination, I just saw an old dude in a fedora, and it made me super sad. But that was like the, the saddest movie I've watched in a while. Dude, it was it was like a it was depressing because I was like, this isn't Harrison Ford, uh, or this isn't Indiana Jones. Um, I saw Han Solo. I did not see Harrison Ford. I saw Han motherfucking Solo and Chewie working together, and. He still got that charm and that sarcasm, that wit. I was like, oh, Harrison mm-hmm. Ford, you're wonderful. Yeah. Um, and seeing him and seeing him in action again, I'm not gonna lie, it it, it just it I was I was nerding out. I was like, oh my yeah. god. Yeah. He uh, was he was so great. I loved seeing Han Solo. And he did. He was like this way, it's like it's not like Indiana Jones where you're trying to make like Indiana Jones youthful again. Like He's just old Han Solo, and that's perfect. Like, it's the amount of time that's passed since, like, the last movie, you know. Um, Not the last movie, but from uh, Return of the Jedi. And he's just, like, an old Han Solo, just chilling. Yeah. (laughs) I like it. Carrie Fisher was kind of a bummer, though. (laughs) See, 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 okay, so we might, that's probably where our lines will be where we just won't agree. I thought she was really sweet in this. She doesn't have a whole lot of screen time, but when you see her and Han interact again, I was like, oh man, this takes me back to Empire. I'm so happy right now. Like, that 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 kinship that they had, their relationship. I was like, I'm really enjoying this, and I like the younger mirror um, to that between Finn and Rey, because, I mean, they don't come out and go like, oh, like, they're gonna, like, date or anything like that but there's the potential there and they actually their on-screen chemistry is in, was probably my favorite part of the whole film just how yeah. well finn and ray work together and oh my god a black guy and a white girl working together like, <laughs> like i'm sorry i'm sitting there like <laughs> this is so progressive for disney who where every princess looks the same <laughs> pretty much so um mm-hmm. I, I appreciated their dynamic back and forth but Colin, you're saying that you thought she was a bummer. Why did why'd you, <laughs> why'd you think she was a bummer? I'm just kind of curious. Uh, I just, I just felt like all her lines she was delivering were super lazy. Like I just felt like you know, it's like uh, Princess Leia had the like life sucked out of her. <laughs> yeah, I think she might have been one of those people who's less like cast as maybe a pretty face at the time, and she ended up like. It's doing well in the movie, and now it's just like, oh, well. Wait, yeah, I was definitely. We I, got I was with you. In. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, we got uh, we got the young girl now. We don't see. Yeah, and the they're pretty emotionless for the most part, and she's just kind of. Yeah, it was pretty meh. I was pretty meh about her. Well, look, admittedly, like, I I was really happy that she was in here, and I, I loved her and Hans. Um, Back and forth. Again, not a whole lot of scenes of them together, but I love seeing them on screen together. Uh, so I got to give, like, the biggest props to uh, Daisy Daisy Ridley, who this is literally the first movie she's ever been in. So, yeah, not a bad really? debut. Really? Yeah, not a d- bad debut. Um, she's incredible in this. I thought she was the best thing about this movie. She's um, strong. She's absolutely gorgeous and then when her story starts to unfold and they give you this pretty big peak so i don't think this is a huge spoiler but she ends up touching uh grabbing a lightsaber and she kind of like flashes back to shit that happened involving that lightsaber so i feel like that's set up for episode eight but she kind of sees that vision she's like oh wow fuck this and she like kind of goes the piece out so i appreciate the fact that she wasn't sure of herself but she gained that confidence as the movie went on. Um, and her last real big scene towards the end of the movie is absolutely fantastic. Um, the The last complaint I'll bring up before we get to our, uh, our thoughts here. The end of the movie, oh my god, gave me the biggest blue balls. It was like the biggest like tease to the point where I was like, Really, you're gonna fuck. Like, I know you have to leave on a, a little bit of a cliffhanger, but goddamn, really. Like, it, it it kind of bothered me that after all this time waiting, they couldn't have had the character that pops up at least say a word. I'm like, give me that at least. But the movie's like, no. <laughs> movie's like, no. So, movie's like, sorry, episode eight. And it's like, oh fuck you. So like that. 
So that honestly did bother me. And um, are you are you talking about when Jar Jar Binks came on screen? <laughs> cor- cor- correct. Oh yeah, no, no spoiler! Damn, oh, it. damn it! I oh. meant you. Alert! Sorry. Colin, he was, the best, he was my number one character. <laughs> God, everyone, biggest standing ovation in the theater. I was <laughs> things came on. <laughs> okay, so so I told Colin this off mic, uh, but uh, Scott, I figure you'd appreciate this story before we get to our final thoughts here. So I go see this uh, midnight right on Thursday. Um, so I go down the Silver Peak, you know, get a. Get a couple of brews in me, you know, smoke a smoke a bowl before I go downtown. So I'm like feeling chill. I'm sitting there in the theater. Um, I got there like at like at eleven thirty. So I'm like hearing the people talk and everything. Get all pumped. Um, so I bought those BB eight like three D glasses. I was like, fuck yeah, I got the three D screen. Hell yeah. It took nice. me, it took me fifteen minutes to realize. Wait a minute, this isn't in three D. I'm in the wrong theater. God. Damn. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's how high I was. I was like, "Damn it all!" So <laughs> pretty good. Yeah, I was. I was really high. So I know I missed about ten minutes of it, but you, know, but, <laughs> you well, missed ten minutes of it. Oh yeah. man, I know. Oh, it's pre- over. <laughs> I I, I, I missed the first ten minutes. It was pretty sad, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I thought that'd make at least a fun story to tell. But but anyways, though this this movie really it's so well done, and this really could have been an absolute clusterfuck and they found a way to not only make this work and give you know younger fans who don't want to go back and watch the originals even though you should not the prequels but just the original trilogy um to give them a a reason to go back and watch and to see these new characters develop and it gives you that sense of wonder that you felt watching the original trilogy um there are complaints with this and we we laid those out but uh I enjoyed this so much, and I cheered, and that theater I was in was packed, and everybody was like, "Woo, ha!" And oh my god, <laughs> like like people were losing their shit. I mean, there were tears, there was whooping. There, were, I mean, people love this movie, and you should. It's a fantastic film. So, um, since it is fantastic, even though I do have my complaints, I would be it would be unfair for me to not give this a fan fucking tastic. This was Yay. And, and, <laughs> and and no on it's so good and and just one quick thing before we get to uh, Scott here. The lightsaber fights felt a lot less choreographed than this. They felt more natural, well as natural as a lightsaber fight could be. And I actually kinda like that them not making it look so pretty, having it kinda be a little more uh a little more on the fly, so yeah, I really enjoyed this. Uh, Scott, what did you think, sir? Yeah, just jumping on the lightsaber thing. Um, it's like I've always wanted to see a lightsaber fight with the graphics and technology we have in movies right now. Like, it's it's just always like one of those things that it's like, well, you know, in the first three, they had they did what they could with special effects and things like that, and then. You know, there's a lot of ton of CGI in the last trilogy, um, and obviously there's a good amount in this. But the the far the way that we've come. So, did you guys see it? Everybody saw it in 3D. Is that right? I did not. I saw Boo. it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not a huge fan of 3D, but I'm gonna okay. go see it in 3D to to go uh, to go just check that out. Yeah, it was. Uh, Really, I, I really enjoyed it in this one. Like, like I, I don't, I don't like it in every movie, but I think it for this was one well. Anyways, back to the movie. I just, I was like, I finally know what it's like to be Hunter, and I was like <laughs> sitting in there. I was, I was smiling like the whole time throughout this movie, and I was just had this big grin on my face uh, throughout the entire movie. Um, I'm glad that they kept cer- certain things that I kind of. Um, you know, Han always has a few things to say, and it's not like completely serious. Um, Oscar Isaac, I absolutely love him. Yeah, he was amazing. Um, and he was great in this movie. Um, John Boyega, who played Finn, and Daisy Ridley, I she comes just coming out of nowhere and just an amazing performance. Um, yeah, just super intense and emotional when she needed to. Um, uh, we already kind of went over the negatives. Yeah, I didn't wasn't a huge fan of drawing. They feel like they drew a little bit 
uh, too much on um, previous uh, episodes, but I like how they incorporated. Um, they have some great fight scenes, uh, lightsaber scenes. You kind of got got your fill of the lightsaber scenes um, and fights, um, and they were able to kind of use the force uh, every once in a while. And they uh, they they kind of. Uh, they don't really go into it as much. Uh, the other movies is, are more about like teaching and like having people learn about the Force. There wasn't as much of that this movie, um, but uh, you kind of saw it in in development in a little bit without giving it away. Um, but it was just I had so much fun in this movie, and it was everything as a Star Wars fan that I wanted from it. Um, so yeah, I got to give this a fan fucking tastic. And just for the record, he he's he's twenty three. Thank God, so I can unleash the force on her if I ever meet her. But I'm sorry. That's oh, a, that's how long a, have you been ter- waiting? I know, I know. It's a, it's a terrible joke. I admit it. But I'm sorry though. Like the fact this is her first movie. I'm like, God damn, you knocked this out of the park. Like, like good for you. Like, fuck. Like. Her first movie is a Star Wars movie. It's fucking badass. But, all right, I'm sorry. Colin, go ahead. Your thoughts, sir. Yeah, I thought the the strongest part about this movie is uh, how well it was cast and um, all the actors did such a great job in this. Um, and the special effects, I think the special effects are probably the best I think I've seen in a movie. Uh, maybe ever. Uh, because... The way J.J. Abrams does his movies, like, he he tries to keep as many things, like, not CGI as possible. I mean, obviously, there's going to be a lot of CGI when you're dealing with, like, TIE Fighters and X-Wings <laughs> getting in dogfights. But, I mean, BB-8 is real. Um, you know, they went through the, the extra effort to make an actual rolling ball with a head that moves around on top, um, which I thought was really cool that, you know, every time you're watching those, I'm like, oh, that's an actual little robot. Um, but yeah, I, I, JJ Abrams can make anything. And I think I would be like, this is the greatest thing I've seen in a long time. Uh, that dude knows how to make a great fun film. Like he did a great job, you know, breathing life back into the mission impossible series. He did a great job breathing life back into star Trek and he's done it again with star Wars. I thought he hit a home run. I think all the gripes we've talked about are valid. There's a lot of things that, you know, are going to, if you looked at, like, at, at the movie is just like a, a, a movie, um, like, if the other movies didn't happen, then you'd be like, oh, there's a lot of, like, silly things that happen, but it's, like, fan service. Like, this movie is total fan service. Yes, it is. Absolutely. Like, they have, there's, there's so many things we could spoil, but it's fun to just go into this movie. I think the cool thing, like, how you talked about the synopsis on uh, IMDb or Rotten Tomatoes or wherever you're reading it. It was, uh, you know, it's so vague. You're like, I have no idea what's going to happen in this movie. And that's how I went into this. And it's just fun to see all, you know, these characters and, like, this, this you know, the the world and, you know, the universe that they all live in with the Force. And you just get to see all this stuff that, like, I watched as a kid. And the last three movies that were made were, you know, pretty disappointing. And to see this and knowing that we're going to get two more of these and how this one ends that Hunter was, you know, biting his tongue trying not to spoil earlier. I didn't. Uh, <laughs> I know, and I, neither will I. Um, but, yeah, there, there's a few gripes that you can you can have while you're watching this. Like, I thought it was kind of weird that, like, they don't go into, like, training with a lightsaber at all. They just all of a they, sudden, they yeah. pick it up and they get into a lightsaber fight. And I'm like, wait, how does uh finn know how to fight with a lightsaber like wouldn't this dude yeah like wouldn't wouldn't kylo ren just be like destroying him right now like how are they in a fight that's like a 50 50 even fight right now um because like at least in a new hope you know you got obi-wan training him and he's you know you got your scene where luke is sitting in the millennium falcon you know practicing with the little droid that's shooting laser at him and you get all that So, like uh, Scott touched on, there wasn't a lot of teaching about, you know, the universe that these people were living in. Um, It's, again, to get back to the, you know, the cliffhanger at the end of this movie, there's going to be a lot of that in the next movie, clearly. Uh, So, yeah, I just, yeah, I fell in love with Star Wars again watching this. It was so fun, and, like, 
Scott was saying. It was fun to be sitting in a theater and be all giddy like Hunter for once, <laughs> you know, <'cause laughs> Marvel's getting all these movies out, you know, you, you get all these great movies that you can get excited about. So it was nice to have one for Star Wars, which has always been one of my favorite series. So, yeah, needless to say at this point, it was a fan fucking tastic. <laughs> yeah. Yay. Um, so fun fact, uh, Star Wars, uh, biggest opening weekend ever, $238 million, blowing, uh, which takes away Jurassic Park's uh, previous record, uh, Jurassic World's, pardon me, previous record of $208 million. So, <coughs> yeah. Um, so Disney, so th- this is already passed, this is already at five hundred. million. And seventeen million dollars international. So Disney's pretty happy <laughs> right now. I'm sure. Um, Two hundred thirty-eight million. I mean, that's crazy. But like, so many movies don't make that in the entire run that they're out in the theater. <laughs> yeah, so including in including international, like <laughs> movies don't do that. But yeah. So yeah, it is. Let's see. It was. I mean, two hundred million dollar budget. I mean, so they they spent a good good amount of money on it, but they made that back opening <laughs> opening weekend. Yeah, that's so crazy. That's crazy. And, and and the last thing I'll say before we just kind of wrap up here, I love Disney because Disney is shameless, man. Because Disney, I was at the store uh, yesterday, like shopping, and fucking a uh, uh, coffee mate, the creamer. They have those in like. Uh, BB-8 colors now. It's like God, Disney. <laughs> yes, it's oh, like, they are cashing in. They are oh, cashing you know the it. fuck in. It's like, oh my god, like it's. What pr- do you think they were doing when we were kids? They were cashing in. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, That's why we're buying it now. <laughs> it's it's kind of ridiculous, but yeah. Hey, kudos Disney. You have never hit here, but uh, guys, would have you seen? I'm assuming you've seen Star Wars. If you let, if you have, please let us know what you thought below in the comments. Uh, keep it spoiler free, by the way. Uh, follow me on the Twitter at J Hunter Real Pineapple. You can like us on Facebook at The Real Pineapple and follow us on SoundCloud at The Real Pineapple Seven Seven Five. Follow Mister uh, Scott Nearman here on Twitter at Newman the First, and follow Colin on Twitter at Buster Good Boy. All right, guys, thank you so much for listening. Can't wait to hear your thoughts on this. Have a good one. Hi. Uh...